Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Cameron Caskey is in the building. He is, uh, unlike uh, all the other guests that I have on, he's uh, actually a Hasanabi head, so he's in the chat with you uh, in a lot of these instances. And uh, I would say probably the most leftist out of all the Parkland uh, kids that now grew up and are adults. Maybe not, but of the ones that uh, stuff like CNN, yeah, probably. I'm doing uh, I'm doing Tapper in like two hours, and I just I, I'm very interested in seeing what nuanced discussion we're gonna have about gun control on that program. Yeah, probably probably not much. The the CNN point of view on this stuff is just like, no, these guns are for killing Muslim children overseas, like not for killing American children here in America. What the f are you doing with guns? For that's that's their attitude for the most part. But uh, for those of you who don't know, here, let's pull up your wiki. Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know, uh, Cameron Kasky is an activist. Uh, more importantly than anything else, obviously, he's a Hassan Abi head, but he's an American activist and an advocate against gun violence who co-founded the student-led gun violence prevention advocacy group Never Again. Uh, he's a survivor of the, uh, the the Parkland school shooting. Yeah, he is here to uh, talk about uh, gun control from a leftist perspective. He's notable for organizing, uh, to help it organize the March for Our Lives nationwide student protest in March 2018. And he's a survivor of the February 2018 mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Wow, you were included in Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People of 2018. Me and Kim Jong-un. Really? Well, I mean, Kristen Cinema is on this one, so. Wait, is she really? Yeah, oh, she was. She was uh, one of I'm the most so influential. Uh, it's funny. It says he currently attends Columbia University. There's so there's so much wrong stuff on this. You don't. You don't attend Columbia University. Is I it think, fake news? I think I'm still enrolled because I'm in a program where you kind of never leave. But I I I don't attend Columbia University. I can't afford that shit. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna uh, give your username away. Um, I don't know what it is, but also I'm not gonna give it away regardless. Gotcha. Um, it's probably. Probably not. It's probably for the best. I don't know if you post a lot in the chat or not, but it's a at proud resistor. Wait, um, really? <laughs> you don't have a lot of time, so uh, I'm just going to continue covering this as I was already. Uh, what do you? I mean, we were just talking about better O'Rourke, but what are your what are your thoughts on better O'Rourke? Well, I mean, I have been very, very vocally critical of most of what better O'Rourke has done since like Ted, since he almost slapped Ted Cruz. I think that that was a great moment, but I think we all kind of expected him to become this like. Obama lib darling that made the same exact kind of resistance moms excited but was never particularly doing as much as I think he claimed he was doing that being said it's this like catch 22 where you know the my, my first thought after this kind of stuff is it's so fucking annoying that everybody's like yep you see these school shootings you got to vote but on the other hand hey T Texas should probably vote for fucking Beto O'Rourke. So I'm like, do I say, do I speak the truth, which is voting keeps us in this cycle of violence where we're never going to be able to make this shit happen? Or do I speak the other truth, which also happens to be true, which is Beto O'Rourke has a semblance of a shot at doing something in Texas and Texas has horrible gun laws. But then again, as somebody with a left-wing perspective, I know a lot of people don't want to disarm the working class and also going to people of color in a country where the police are like fucking violent as fuck and in gangs and shit and doing awful things and being like, hey, cough up the guns, give them over to me. It's a lot more nuanced than people want to treat it as because gun control laws are everything from life-saving to racist. And it's tough. Yeah. Um, well, Better O'Rourke went up uh, as, as Governor Greg Abbott was talking uh, earlier today, and he said, like, you know, you're responsible, something along those lines. I mean, this is theater, but from what I understand, he does legitimately care. Like, it, it, this is one issue that he legitimately cares about, I think, to a certain degree, because if he didn't care about it, then he would never, uh, as I was saying earlier, he would never fucking run in Texas as someone who wants to maintain a role in, like, Texas politics and openly run on, like, or openly campaign on saying... Uh, openly campaign on saying stuff like I'm going to take guns away in Texas. Like y you have to care about it. One of the biggest bits of misinformation we Fucking see idiot. is after mass shootings is Republicans mining for any fake shit they can use to treat the shooter as somebody who was dealing with gender dysphoria and use it as an attack on trans people and on non-binary They did that already, yeah. They did that for this one? Yeah, didn't they did. I not fucking know that. Yeah, Jesus immediately, Christ. one of the first things that they did is they found like a like a trans woman on, on Reddit and were like, this is the shooter, actually. She was like, I'm literally alive. The shooter is dead. What the fuck? This is me. But they didn't. That didn't stop them. That didn't stop fucking, uh, you know, Paul Gozar, the, the 4chan... Uh, representative from coming out and, and also blaming uh, a random trans person for the shooter uh, as the shooter. Uh, he tweeted about it. Good. Great country, to be honest. Like, it's awesome. It's just uh, politics is great in, in this situation. Uh, here's the Paul Gozar tweet for the record. Um, 
Uh, this false the shooter was trans rumors going around the far right is from a 4chan thread that links to a completely uninvolved person on reddit who is still alive doesn't live in texas and obviously had nothing to do with the shooting um here i'll just retweet this as well we already know fooled it's a transsexual leftist illegal alien named salvatore ramos it's apparently your kind of trash that's what he said um you have to, people like to also treat this as something that's kind of a new phenomenon. But if you look back at the shit they were saying after Parkland, and I, to tell you the truth, I wasn't in the I wasn't like tapped into culture at the time of Sandy Hook and and other shootings, so I didn't really know the response. But after Parkland, they were making up the most insane shit in the world. It was it was fucking nuts. They, they said my, my, I happened to be someone who spoke on television about a mass shooting who has a father and grandfather who were adoption lawyers. So. QAnon saw adoption lawyer and they were like, oh, uh, Russian child they said, trafficking. They said you're uh, uh, like a QAnon. They said your family's QAnon. Uh, I, they no, they said my family. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't well, deep state child trafficking shit as if my father and grandfather are nearly intelligent enough to pull something like that off. So, yeah, they blamed they uh, blamed a random trans person. Uh, what else is new on that front? But I mean, the, the reaction that they have, uh, the things that they've said so far are exactly the same in the aftermath of Parkland, in the aftermath of Sandy Hook. And they're going to continue saying the same things over and over again. It's such a fucking automated response that like people engage with. One, don't make this political, even though it's inherently a political issue. That is the reason. There is one main difference that like, I mean, there's a reason why this happens all the time in America, right? And not in any other comparable OECD developed nation that, and that is the prevalence of guns, obviously. The other thing is like, oh, well, if it's a white shooter, they'll say mental health. Okay. Well then, you know, offer some kind of remedy for that. They don't do that either. They don't care. It's just a way to deflect away uh, the attention from guns and having a conversation about gun control. Then they they now recently have started, like in the aftermath of Parkland, uh, where you know they they brought up the the uh, Pioneer program, I think it's called, like the Florida the so arming like teachers. Like oh, I th I thought you were talking about the like. Kind we're, of, we're gonna get right into sorry, it. Sorry, there. So I thought you were talking about the Obama era program that was for students who needed serious discipline that was one of the things that the right really targeted with that shooter but there was also you know the arming teacher shit but that, i mean out of florida like you know you can expect that type of bullshit one of the things that they have moved on to now is just like making schools not be soft targets and what they mean by that is they want to put like they want to put like uh you know people guards security guards cops uh school resource officers in schools uh, to be the good guy with a gun right that's their that's basically what they're talking about like they need a, a good guy with a gun myth that would also work in schools because it works in real life it's not a it's not something that works in real life and it didn't even work in parkland specifically do you know the like whole story with him the, i mean here tell tell everyone in the chat what happened in parkland in parkland uh the SRO, the school resource officer, who I saw every single day at school, like he was doing the traffic entering, like we all knew this guy, Officer Scott Peterson. He fucking Irish exited the shooting, saw that there was a mass shooting going on and dipped out literally faster than I've ever seen anybody leave anything. Uh, <laughs> and um, and then and then instantly, like conservatives were like, all right, well, get as many cops on campus as possible. And that's where the within the left wing kind of discussion about guns gets complicated is, OK, disarming members of the working class is dangerous in a country where the working class is actively oppressed. But on the other hand, disarming the working class is like, you know, it, ex excuse me, put it, putting police officers in these situations only makes them more violent and with the the AR-15s and similar guns, there's already so fucking many of them out there. The assault weapons ban is about stopping those things from entering the market. It's not about anything else. There's too many for it to be safe for consumer use, and they're marketed like consumer products. They have the same fucking focus groups doing their advertisements as there, as there are for Mattel. Like, it's, it's insane what's going on. And within the left, it's difficult because people make really good points about police being brought into situations when other people can't defend themselves. If you disarm, you know, citizens does that mean that we're going to count on the police for anything how are you supposed to say that to people in a community no i don't I, I think like well one thing i always talk about is like when i talk about uh disarming people or when i talk about like uh gun control uh, and, and restrictions on the purchase of guns in some capacity or licenses i'm actually talking about disarming the police as well i think the police should have less guns there should be less guns overall 
it goes hand in hand. Now, the other thing I have to mention here is because the cops will use and they'll justify bigger budgets and say they need further militarization by saying that like everyone can have an AR-15. Like I'm terrified. I'm a cop. Eric it's Adams like the, is big about it. He's yeah. those like, let's take the guns off the streets. And it's just like, okay, here's another billion dollars. Yeah. So, so that is, uh, you know, you can't talk about gun control without like also talking about disarming uh, police in a meaningful way as well. Obviously, that also has to happen. One of the things I want to talk about, though, specifically with respect to good guy with a gun being a myth, is the reality that there were cops at the school. As far as we know, from what we understand, there were cops already at the school. They were shooting at the shooter. They were shooting at the shooter, and uh, they claimed that he had a body armor, which we don't know if it's true or not. They're saying he only had a plate carrier now, and, and they couldn't ding him. So they just allowed this fucking dude to walk into the school and kill 19 children and, and three adults. Well, it's the same thing as the metal detector thing. It's like if somebody wants to go fucking shoot a bunch of people... They can shoot the people in the line for the metal detector. The, the, the metal detector argument is so fucking popular, even with liberals. Liberals love the metal detectors at school idea. And the metal detectors at school idea is based on the premise that a student is just going to come in with an AR-15, a huge piece of machinery in their backpack and be like, hey, I'm going to make sure that I do math and chemistry before I begin murdering people as, as if these shooters aren't people who are coming in and instantly fucking doing what they're doing. So it's yeah. absurd. It's just a way for them to harass black students. That's what they love doing after mass shootings is making being a black student as difficult as possible. Uh, this is also known as the school to prison pipeline where right. the presence of police in schools are... Uh, uh, turn into basically another way to harass, bully, and even, you know, uh, throw uh, into jail uh, black students and brown students usually. I think I might have seen something last night. I was reading up about it. Uh, is it is, isn't it that more children have now been killed in schools this year than cops on duty? I'm almost certain that that's Yeah, no, that is, that is true, yes. That more more school teachers, uh, more school children have kill have been killed in schools in the United States of America in 2020 than cops by gunfire on the line fucking of babies. duty. You know they they are getting like gigantic swaths of the the actual uh, the actual budget. A lot of the budget allocation goes to police and and you know so they can buy M wraps and like all this tactical gear and feel super cool Cure when they're the harassing COVID, people. All the COVID that they got. Yeah, and then they all get fucking butchered by COVID regardless. Most of the cop deaths, for those of you who don't know, uh, are come from COVID, for the record. It's the most deadly thing for cops since COVID started popping off. 2020, 2021, 2022, cops are dying way more. They're dying way more on the line of duty, okay? And they're all dying from fucking COVID. Meanwhile, like a lot of reputable or uh, at least considered reputable liberals are out here being like, well, you know, the, it, it's important that we protest for the Black Lives Matter, but you know, it is important to consider what's happening to these police officers. And it's like, yeah, they should wear a fucking mask. Or get vaccinated, uh, but they're all anti-vaxxers right, and the police too. union uh, police union defends them. But yeah, more children, more students at fucking school have died in gunfire than cops on the line of duty. Just remember that. That's, what, that's the country you're living in. As a matter of fact, the number one cause of child fatality in this country used to be car accidents and uh, that's no longer the case it's actually gun uh, fire now uh, around approximately like 4,000 I think gunfire is the leading cause of death for children in this country in 2020 gunfire became the leading cause of death firearms have overtook auto accidents as the leading ca cause of death in children remember there's nothing we can do about it it's just a natural way of things okay guns are naturally occurring in the wild there's nothing we can do to regulate it there's nothing we can ever do to to you know maybe try to prevent some of this from happening well especially the pro-life party loves this shit but yeah 10 percent of those deaths 4,357 were children okay 10 percent of all gun firearm related deaths in the united states in 2020 out of the uh, nearly 50,000 gunfire fatal that happened in 2020 10 percent of that 4057 were children meanwhile conservatives will instantly like it's like it's like it's completely burned the, into their brain say we well, have to remember that almost every single get, gun death is actually gangs and it's yeah. and they like to pretend it's not fucking dipshit dads not putting the safety on their gun cleaning their gun improperly kids going in or or suicide which is uh you know nearly uh half more than half of the of the suicide uh uh you know successful suicide attempts i don't know how to fucking you know phrase yeah. it correctly but suicide deaths. um they are yeah they are uh oh fuck oh i Who's can't daniel see this defense I, daniel defense is the 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 business that actually sold does anyone have the screenshot yeah, of daniel defense if, let me see if i can find it because now they're they're like blocked 
Let me go to Ethan's. Twitter. But the company that the company that fucking sold uh, in Georgia, the famous Georgia company that sold the the AR-15s that uh, this kid used on his uh, that he purchased on his 18th birthday, by the way, legally. That that company straight up yesterday posted a a photo of a fucking baby. Yeah, and here. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Yeah, this is it. Train up a child and the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. This is a baby that they fucking that they fucking posted. Uh, they locked their account probably because they probably were getting harassed. They posted this while the shooting was happening. An hour during the shooting happening, they also posted the "Do you run a DDM4 uh, V7?" Which is what the gun the shooter was using, if I'm not mistaken. It's great advertising for them. I mean, it's how they sell this shit. Yeah, they locked their account. Daniel, the mass shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary in 2012 drove us a lot of sales. That was a horrible event, and we don't use those kinds of terrible things to drive sales. But when people see politicians start talking about gun control, he's openly admitting it, by the way. This is something I talked about before. A fascinating phenomenon in America is that, uh, you know what sells guns? Mass shootings. I've told you this before. Gun sales go up during Democratic administrations. Gun sales go up because uh, people think, oh my God, the Democrats are coming for our guns. And they go and try to purchase. They go and try to purchase guns. But yeah, the mass shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary drove a lot of sales. He's openly stating it uh, right now. What about common sense gun control proposals like closing the gun show loophole? How would such a measure affect your business? Terms like common sense come from people whose only goal is to take our guns away. There is no gun show loophole. Every licensed dealer has to follow the law. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was following the law in that situation uh, when he sold this exact weapon that they're fucking promoting on their on their account while the shooting was happening, by the way, or I think an, after, uh, an hour after the shooting occurred. Uh, this is what they sold to the shooter himself. Those transactions happen to the shows, outside of shows, and on Craigslist and between friends. They don't affect our business. That's what he said. But unlicensed private dealers sell at gun shows and they don't have to do background checks. This is my my favorite type of person on the internet. Uh, uh, the, the Matt Iglesias style liberal <laughs> that, you know, says things like this. Every child's death is a tragedy and I'm in favor of stricter gun regulations, but... For the sake of everyone's mental health, we should remember that there are more than 50 million K through 12 school children in the U.S. dying in a mass school shooting is literally less than one in a million danger. Yeah, bro. Like, come on, guys. It's not that big of a deal. Except like, you know, it just simply, it just seems to happen almost exclusively in America. So strange that it just like seems to seemingly only happens in the United States of America for some fucking weird reason. And as you regularly point out, uh, the, 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 the real dark comedy of it is the perpetual victim take that like every gun person has in a country where you're like, it's, it's, it's the best country in the world. If you're a fucking gun fetishist who needs that shit to like feel special. And every everybody's talking about how they're always constantly under attack and nothing's getting done. It's like they're, they're always in fight or flight mode. There's this there's this paranoia to it that's really at the center of the way that as like as, as we just said that they market. It's all about keeping everybody fucking terrified. Of yeah. The people like you showing up. What, what was it that Alex Jones said and like stealing their daughter? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, they're in a constant state of panic. American Republicans are in a constant state of uh, panic. A lot of the a lot of the reactionaries in this country are also in a constant state of like uh, assuming that people are out to get them and that they need to fucking defend themselves with their weapons. They greatly overemphasize their own personal skill level in an active shooting situation. They think that they will be the fucking good guy with a gun that will you know personally stop the bad guy with a gun from doing anything. It's, it's like not. You, it's, you a, it's, it's a it's a falsehood. Before. You fired big guns before. It's a fucking insane thing. Something like an AR-15, the shit that that can do to the body of the person operating it, it's, it's fucking dangerous. The, with bump stocks, people are always talking about banning bump stocks. And if, you, if you're walking into a school with a bump stocked out AR-15, it, it, all of this to say, like you said, people overestimate their ability to stop these things. Cops can't fucking stop these things. And they got their however many hours of training in police academy that, of course, never went to dealing with serious things like... The New York Police Department has a 17% uh, hit rate on an active shooting situation. 17% is what they... What, is, is the the amount of times they actually hit the target in an active shooting. Those motherfuckers actually do get shooting training, okay? Most people don't even get that level of uh, training. Every part of this is just fucked. People say mental health is important. Mental health is something that we need to address and then turn around and refuse to address it. It's all at misdirection. And it still ultimately works uh, to, to beef up the profits of our industry, our, our gun manufacturing industry, okay? I will That's say it. gun manufacturing is one of the only industries that America has managed to make work. So congratulations yeah. to them. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if uh, 
we are the only we are the only developed nation where this happens all the fucking time. Uh, it doesn't matter if you know you hear harrowing uh, things like firearms overtaking auto accidents is a leading cause, leading cause of death in children. It doesn't matter uh, you know if the the good guy with a gun was literally present in the in the Rob Elementary School shooting. There was a good guy with a gun in, at the Buffalo Tops store. There was a good guy with a gun at Parkland. In none of those instances did the good guy with a gun actually end up preventing people from dying unfortunately and and yet uh, you know people still go after it they still go after the the narrative of a good guy with a gun saving the situation stopping the situation we need to give more guns we need to we need to arm every child with a fucking glock until like you know only then can we be safe it, it just sucks anyway uh yeah better work confronted uh governor greg abbott did you watch the video yet? I mean, I, I looked at it briefly, but here's what, here, we'll watch what he said. There are family members who are crying as we speak. There are family members whose hearts are broken. There's no Ted words like that anybody muppet. shouting can come up here and do anything to heal those broken hearts. We all, every Texan, every American, has a responsibility where we need to focus not on ourselves and our agendas we need to focus on the healing and so what's up like what what do you when he says stuff like that what i want to understand is like what do you mean like what 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 can we do like what should we do how do we focus on healing and try to prevent this uh this this senseless violence from happening i mean you know it's 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 something you get from liberals and conservatives alike when they're not interested in doing something is it's such a strong pathos to say this is the time to think of the victims the victims are are enduring this horrible thing and that's so very true but in terms of political discussions last night night I was doing the Anderson Cooper show whatever the Anderson Cooper 360 or something and the, it was right after Biden had given his address where he said well well isn't this just so sad and the two people that were on afterwards said wow you know it's great that we have this leader with compassion who is who's endured this own personal loss himself and Biden's speech was about how awful loss is and yeah it's great that it isn't Trump going over there and doing what he did in Parkland and saying I would have run into the shooting I would have fought the shooter but it's like the, the these people on this reputable, this this massive, not excuse me, this massive news network um, are are out here, you know, just talking about how sad it is that Joe Biden has endured personal loss, and that's what they always do. That's what the narrative always is. It's about personal loss, and it's not about the fact that there's a product on the market that's dangerous and is killing dozens and dozens and dozens of people every single week. So it's like, you know, as somebody who has sat here, like, wow, the isn't this sad industrial complex hit Parkland up real quick for as many weeks as it was profitable? Like seeing this shit, I mean, it's you know Republicans, it's it's obvious. I'm really disappointed when I see it from Democrats who I know are just going to do jack shit. It's the same thing with yeah B Biden talking about this and not ever mentioning Joe Manchin. He's talking about all the people who are stopping us from getting meaningful gun reform. Will not call out the two people who are completely fucking his presidency by name. Absolute nonsense. Um, w does anyone have that tweet where like Kirsten Cinema is is uh, and and I think I believe Joe Manchin as well are like literally saying the exact same thing that uh, Republican uh, senators have said about like thoughts and prayers. Like they didn't even do the like uh, you know we need to tackle this at the at the legislative level. They straight up were just like they just straight up are using the exact same deflection method in the exact same capacity. Look at this. Look at this. Look here it is. Kirsten Cinema. We are horrified and heartbroken by the senseless tragedy unfolding at Robb Elementary School in Texas and grateful to the first responders for acting swiftly. No family should ever have to fear violence in their children's schools. Horrified and heartbroken, says Senator Marsha Blackburn. Uh, to learn the significant loss of life in the shooting of uh, Uvalde, Texas, please join me in lifting their loved ones up in prayer. Thank you for the local first responders working on the scene. Leader Mitch McConnell, horrified and heartbroken by the reports of the disgusting violence directed at innocent school kids in Uvalde, Texas. The entire country is paying for the, praying for the children, families, teachers, staff, and the first responders on the scene. Straight up the exact same thing that Christian Cinema is saying as the Republicans are. So just remember, they, they, they're they getting the same fucking script. They're repeating the same ass, boring ass fucking script that everyone else is repeating because they don't give a shit. They don't care. Democrats ultimately don't care either. I'm sorry. There are some who do. There are some who legitimately do care. I, I think like they go a little bit beyond like uh, passionate speeches and they do advocate for it. Uh, but ultimately, there are enough Democrats that don't care. You know why? Because dead babies is good, okay? It's good for them. They can fucking profit off of it. They can run, 
campaign ads off of it. That That's the end all be all. These motherfuckers don't give a shit about anything. They don't care about your safety. They don't care about your security. They don't care about making things better for you. They care about getting reelected. They care about having and maintaining committee positions so they can get more lobbying uh, done and they can uh, have maybe a cushy job at the end of their fucking career. That's all they give a shit about. The, the thing that seriously, seriously scares me is the future of people like Eric Adams within the Democratic Party because Eric Adams has this unbelievable unbelievably valuable political identity as a black cop Democrat. And that is that that puts him at a, in a space where he's so compelling to so many centrist voters in so many different spaces, because if I'm a centrist Democrat and I see a black man who claiming he's a progressive, who is also a police officer and pro police, I would be I would be elated. I would say this is exactly what we need to reach out to the conservatives who would ever vote for a black Democrat for president. Meanwhile, now he's saying he's going to run for president. He's quoting, he, he's literally saying he's going to be the future of the Democratic Party. And it's like, is Eric Adams going to be the type of, uh, the type of basket that the Democrats are putting all their eggs in? Like, is this what, is this our future? Is the, no, the, the gun control we get? I don't, I don't mean Eric Adams specifically in his fucking rosy bathtubs, but I'm saying like the type of Democrats where gun control is a very popular part of their marketing scheme, but it's specifically the really racist shit that's. What, that's what we're hearing even from Biden gang that's like, oh, we need to make sure we're giving cops the resources to be able to track these guns down and stop them. That is literally a Trojan horse for violence. It's so fucking insane. I've said it's so insane, I think, after every stanza on this stream, and I apologize. It's just one of those days. Look, uh, here is here is another. This is so feckless and so awful for the record. Like, I know Senator Chris Murphy had some things to say that were like very passionate and everyone's fucking retweeting him and stuff. But like it's this same exact attitude that is responsible for the the lack of movement in the Democratic side. It's this idea that like you have to get some Republicans to please do the right thing. They're never going to do the right thing, dude. They're never going to do the right thing. OK, you are doing the wrong thing by creating this idea that like maybe some Republicans will do the right thing. That has never happened. Why the fuck would it change now? Let's take a look at what Chuck Schumer had to say about it. There is a plague, a plague upon this nation, a plague of gun violence that has taken over this country. The problem in the Senate is simple. Too many members on the other side of the aisle are disconnected from the suffering of the American people. Too many members on that side care more about the NRA than they do about families who grieve. To my Republican colleagues, imagine if it happened to you. Imagine if this was your kid or your grandkid. How would you feel? Could you ever? They don't give a fuck, dude. That's not going to happen to their grandchildren. They're going to private school with like fucking, it's, it's like a million times removed from the potential consequences of like a, like a random, uh, being in a random underserved uh, and, and predominantly uh, Latino community, okay? It, uh, it's not. It's not happening. And it's like, also just like nobody's going to talk about the fact that this is a honeypot ice trap. And it's, and it's like Democrats have three talking points that are so fucking popular because they should be. That was, we need background checks. Yeah, we fucking need background checks. Red flag laws. That's all great. We're not talking about the fact that gun control as an issue that we need to be enforcing is also used to to do shit like that. So it's I can't even watch politicians talk about it anymore. It's it just brings me right back to 2018. Like it, it brings me back to when they were doing it after party. It's just not pleasant because it's the same exact shit. I've gotten older, but their talking points haven't matured at all. I started puberty back in like 2019 and they and then they've been saying the same shit ever since. So what, what do you want me to do? Watch the same people looking slightly older saying the same stuff they said after Parkland? It's it's just, I mean, yeah, that's that's all we got. Ever forgive yourself for not supporting a simple law that would make these mass shootings less likely? Yeah. Wow, man. Look at yourself. Dude, why the fuck would they care? They live with their they live with their demon asses every fucking day. They've already decided that it's okay to fucking uh, rob the American people, refuse to fucking give them health care, refuse to uh, allow them to live a life of dignity, refuse to fucking improve their wages so they don't have to like rely on the government to survive, to get food, even though they're working fucking full-time hours at a Walmart or whatever. Why the fuck would they care if like some people are going to get murdered by an AR-15 or whatever other kind of fucking gun in uh, a, a black or brown neighborhood, okay? Why would they give a fuck? They don't. They don't care about any 
anything. Part of the reason why they don't care about anything is because this side doesn't do a good job. The Democratic side doesn't do a good job of like pushing back against them, okay? Or actually like trying to collectively put together an agenda that has a chance of succeeding, a chance of fucking passing. Change the rules of the fucking game if you need to. They're not doing that either, so they don't have anything. We can't even get the Democrats to fucking care about it let alone uh, or, or uh, you know, pass their agenda in a meaningful capacity or, or push to pass their agenda even in a meaningful way other than just like sit around, throw your hands in the fucking side and go, oh man, how bad are these Republicans? Am I right? They're obstructing every step of the way. Hey, you, could you ever in a fucking million years imagine Mitch McConnell going up on stage like this and being like pushing for like, I don't know, executing mothers who had an abortion law or whatever the fuck, right? Whatever new thing that the Republicans want to pass in that moment and going, oh man, we simply don't have the votes for this. And honestly, it's a shame on the, the, the Democrats to not allow us to pass this legislation, like do the right thing. No, they don't give a fuck. If they can't, if they undermine the legislative uh, uh, powers, they will go and use the state legislature to push for murdering a, a, a fucking a teenager who uh, got an abortion bill or whatever the fuck they're pushing for, okay? Like give, a, give every baby an AR-15 and a rocket launcher bill. It gets passed if it needs to be passed. If the, the small arms manufacturers are going to make money off of it and they want the Republicans to push for fucking legislation, they will sidestep congressional power and use the state legislature to do it because they are actually motivated okay they are actually motivated and they genuinely do want to make change whereas the democrats are simply relying on republican viciousness to to get reelected. which i mean to their to their to their great luck the viciousness is only becoming clearer but i mean you know we, we have a whole generation right now that is very very young kind of becoming privy to what this whole kind of circle of but vote really is and it's going to have consequences in the next 10 years and i don't think people like to think that far ahead the wild fantasy for democrats is like mitch mcconnell hearing a guy be like have you no decency sir and being like my god what have i done and the republican fantasy is a is the giant pile of skulls from the start of terminator yeah exactly I mean, this is how it is. It's like they think that like they're going to uh, have, you know, decency, sir, their way out of uh, uh, like uh, their their way into getting like uh, Mr. legislation. Mr. Passed. Vice President, I'm speaking. <laughs> yeah, it's just like you really think like you're going to play some fucking Lin-Manuel Miranda. And then all of a sudden Republicans are going to be like, oh, my God, great, Scott. Well, we'll see. What was I? What have I done? I think we ought to try it. No, if they all like sit around and watch West Wing, maybe they'll all, uh, you know, believe that, you know, we can actually uh, we can actually get comprehensive uh, legislative change. Please, 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 damn it. Put yourself oh, in the cursed. shoes of these parents Gen Z's gonna love for that. once. If the slaughter of school children... Please, damn it, sir, do it. Like, shut up, nerd. What the fuck? What are you saying, dude? My friends and I say damn. That's relatable. Oh, God. I want, I want like, pistol duels. If, if, if every American and has to live under the constant threat of, like, gun violence when they send their fucking school children to school... Okay, and it's a legitimate thing that people have to think about, and and people are going through this like traumatic fucking uh, experience of of doing like shooting, active shooting drills and shit. That teachers are taught specifically to close the door on other students, like it's a fucking zombie apocalypse movie. That's like um, teachers have to literally lock the fucking doors, and if there's someone crying outside, like please let me in, because that person might be the fucking school shooter, they won't let them inside. Well, there's, a, there's another element to it, too, that is kind of one of those things that you only realize when you're in it, which is when the glass breaks on the window in the door, and the, the first thing that comes in is the gun, and you don't know if it's the shooter or the SWAT team, yeah. and during the shooting, I was in a room with a lot of the special needs kids, and police officers, especially in South Florida, receive absolutely no substantial training in responding to situations with developmentally disabled people. It's like a couple hours, if even, of their education. So I was sitting there with all these special needs kids, some of whom might have had elevated responses to seeing somebody come in with a fucking gun, cop or not a cop. And, you know, it was young students who, are, who deal with de de developmental disabilities, they, they are not going to process everything that's going on the same way that everybody else is because that's, 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 they, have, they, live di they have a different perspective. So when the, when the SWAT team came in, the fear, the, the fear can, of getting shot or watching somebody got, get shot continued because if one of those students had an elevated response, none of us knew if one of the cops was going to fucking merc them. So it's, it's, just a, it's just a whole mess. A whole mess and a half. 
Yeah. And in, by the way, in terms of what you said about duels and how we need pistol duels, I will say Lin Manuel Miranda did do that in Hamilton. So maybe. maybe yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like, if, if they have to, if every other American has to live with that fear of like their child getting fucking uh, murked at school, okay, and that they have to do like these uh, drills all the time, then you know, so should Congress, in my opinion. You know, mix it up, spice it up a little bit, make them make Congress uh, resemble the feelings and attitudes and experiences of the working class by. Uh, I don't know, engaging in fucking duels sometimes. Just just spice it up. Look at how fucking terrified they were when January 6th happened. Everyone shat their fucking pants and then literally collectively talked about how this was almost as bad as 9-11, if not worse, the sacred hallowed that halls of Congress. Insane, I didn't give a shit. That. Yeah, massive investigation over January 6th, tons of school shootings, nothing. Yeah, there's so much, so much happened with January 6th. They thought that it was going to be a good political motivator when it was yet another instance of the do-nothing Democrats failing once again. They could have done something in the immediate aftermath of January 6th, but they didn't, okay? They didn't actually truly prosecute any of the fucking people that were directly responsible for it. They're still in the they're still in those same halls of Congress. And it's just another costly and unnecessary investigation now that's continuing when the people don't even give a shit. A lot of EU chatters uh, aren't aware during lockdown drills. If you're not in the classroom and the announcement comes, you are locked out and you won't get in until the all clear gets called that, in. That was another fucked up thing that happened at Douglas was the bathrooms in the building that got shot up. I think two out of the three of the bathrooms were locked. Speaking of dad pens, because kids were vaping in the bathrooms so there were people trying to get into the bathroom to hopefully escape this deranged shooter that were unfortunately stuck in the halls because um the bathrooms were locked and also what you were saying about teachers having to shut the door and get all the kids in my dear friend who, who was killed at douglas a guy named scott beagle who i had known since i was very very young and uh he had been my t teacher multiple times at multiple schools and he was my camp counselor he died shoving kids into his classroom he died in the doorway throwing kids in there and that's part of what getting a teaching degree is now is learning how to be a fucking first responder i i don't know i don't know what to say uh, other than yeah jesus it's just that's what happened in this school as well i mean you, you have a bunch of you have a bunch of teachers we don't know the exact details but like a bunch of teachers died no cops died i'll tell you that much not a single fucking cop put their body on the line in the line of fire yeah, that's for that's teachers for did little, that's for little kids yeah that's for do. exactly it was for fourth graders that that's that was in the line of fire the, what, one thing i'll say before i head out and then I'll, I'll, I'll text you later but one thing i'll say before that is i think one of the massive cultural shifts that we can see about mass shootings in the past four years because parkland was let's say i about i want to say four four years and three months ago something like that um is the fact that when the Parkland shooting happened, a lot of people in the media were talking about the names of the survivors, the heroes within the school who who showed great courage. A lot of people knew the names of the survivors. Biden and, and other politicians are still in touch with the victims' families. And like there was a shooting with, what, 10 people getting killed in Buffalo, what, five, six days ago. I don't know a single name of a single one of the victims. They were all black victims. 100% part of the fact that the American media uh, obviously does not um, does not acknowledge the suffering that people of color go through in this country and the way that it's treated. But it's like Parkland, Sandy Hook. That there was a lot of personal connection to the event. And right and right now, this shooting's happening. You don't fucking know who is part of it. You you hear stories like this grandma uh, do, doing an unbelievable human achievement to try and stop violence, and we're not gonna fucking remember. We're not going to remember any of this shit. Meanwhile, a lot of people still remember things from Parkland, and I'm personally, selfishly, quite happy that they do because I hope people remember things about the people we lost in Parkland and the people involved. But it's like these these things are stacking and stacking and stacking and stacking, and sure, they were always around, but now they're so built into the media world that, like... I don't remember what shootings happen. I have Freudian slips where I get shootings wrong. I never used to do that. I used to fucking know every detail of every shooting, and now I'm mixing up Albuquerque with Buffalo with some city in Florida. I can Google Florida mass shooting. There's probably one every day at least, and and it's a mess. Um, on that note, I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm glad you made it back to the gym, and I will uh, I will text you. All right. Thank Much you love, coming. man. Uh, Cameron Kasky, everybody. Yeah, Cameron uh, obviously has a personal involvement in uh, and, and has been actively trying to, uh, you know, combat gun violence and, and mass shootings and uh, bring about some kind of sensible gun uh, control as he was personally a victim of and a survivor of the Parkland school shooting. And uh, yeah, he's, he's great.